Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell from the title, we're doing another luxury haul. I received quite a few questions in my last video regarding my hair and just kind of wanting a hair tutorial or how I achieved that hair look, which is mostly my natural hair, but I did use a different hair dryer uh, for that hair as well as the hair that I have in this video. I'm going to be sharing that hair dryer first. So that hair dryer is the Zuvi Halo hair dryer. I am partnering with them on this video, but again, all of my opinions are my own. You guys know, again, I don't accept sponsorships with brands that I don't believe in or products. I'm not going to show you guys a product that I wouldn't purchase myself. So if you're unfamiliar with Zuvi's Halo hair dryer, it uses a light care technology which basically dries the water on the surface of your hair while still keeping your hair healthy and hydrated. So here is the Zuvi Halo hair dryer. I really love the look. I like how it's white um, and very good quality as well. I was actually really impressed when I unboxed this. I literally sent my best friend a video and I was like, this is actually for a sponsorship and I'm really obsessed with this. I would go and buy this myself. Um, I really like how it has silver on here. It might be a little bit difficult to see. Um, if there's lighting or shadowing, um, but it has silver here um, and along this rim and then it has white here um, and then this is the back, so the front where you blow dry is this side, this is the back and um, this is where you obviously turn it on, off. So personally, I only use the fast and the style setting, but it does have a care and soft setting, so it has four settings total and then this is the on and off button. With the Zuvi Halo hair dryer, it also uses less heat, so it's at 111 degrees Fahrenheit as opposed to traditional hair dryers where they use 140 degrees Fahrenheit heat. So I think that combined with the light care technology is what's attributing to my hair not really becoming oily even after a week or normally if I let it air dry or use a traditional hair dryer, my hair becomes oily after about four days. So I really like that aspect. Um, my hair is able to last long. Everybody wants to try to avoid the hair dry process, especially if you have hair like mine. So I really like how it's able to last longer. And I also really like the look of this hair dryer. It's very sleek. I love the white and the silver. Um, very aesthetically pleasing. I would say this is actually a lot better. I have tried the Dyson hair dryer. I would say this is a lot better than that one. So if you were thinking of buying that one or if you already owned that one and you've had it for a while, you're looking for a new one, I would definitely recommend you try this one, especially if you have the same hair type as me. So I use the fast setting first and you just use this little button. You press it once to change each to each setting. Um, I use the fast setting first because my hair is very thick. Um, I want it to be fast. I want to get the blow dry process over as quickly as possible and I just hold it down like this. Um, I also noticed when I was blow drying it, I'll insert a clip as well. It has this really cool light, which is obviously from the light care technology that appears here. So it's silver when it's off, it has almost a green iridescent sort of light that appears here, which I thought was really cool uh, when it's on, of course. And so without the attachments is what I do when I am just drying and I use the fast setting. You could use the care setting if you wanted to or the soft. And then once my hair is mostly dry, I then go to the style setting and I use this attachment, silver. It looks so cool on. And when you uh, attach this, it has like it's magnetic, so you'll see in a second. It just attaches on. It's not going anywhere. That's an issue with a lot of hair dryers I've had. Is my hair is very thick. I'm using a lot of force to blow dry, and the attachment is usually just like you know plastic, and it goes on, and it's not magnetic or anything. So it usually comes off and goes flying across the bathroom when I'm blow drying my hair. So I really like how this one, it's on there good. You almost have to like pull a little to take it off. So I then will apply this attachment and I will change it to the style setting and then I'll use a brush, just kind of go over. I don't do it for too long because again, I like the effortless look. I don't have time to sit there all day. Um, and so I just kind of go over these front sections. So as you can tell, um, these sections might look like a little bit more straight than the rest of my hair. And then I just put it in that top bun in a towel scrunchie. So you don't want to use style mode first. That's only for styling when your hair is 80% dry. You want to use care fast or soft mode for when you're just drying your hair and then style mode for when you're ready to style it and it's 80% dry. So it comes with three different attachments. This one is the only one I've personally used, which is the style concentrator. So I basically dry it with the fast setting first until it's 80% dry, and then I attach the style concentrator and style it with the style setting. I have not tried the diffuser or the gentle air attachment. So this is after one day I blow dried my hair using Zuvi's Halo hair dryer yesterday. And in my prior video, which I would say my hair looked a little bit better in that video, that was on day two or three. So I have noticed that, or I guess today would technically be day two. I washed my hair last night. Uh, for me, I really count the day after I wash my hair as day one since I typically want to sleep on it with a towel scrunchie for the first night after washing. So today I would qualify more so as day one. Uh, for me, day two and day three seems to be when my hair looks the best. 
um, I'm not really sure if that's just my specific hair type or what but I have noticed it definitely keeps my hair style lasting a lot longer my hair does not become oily at all I did obviously wash it after a one week mark because I just wouldn't want to go longer than that without washing my hair but my hair actually was not oily at all even on that one week mark and normally my hair starts to get oily after about four days if you are interested in purchasing Zuby's halo hair dryer I will have a link to their website as well as to this hair dryer specifically in the description box now on to some pieces from Missoni the first thing is this silk blouse from Missoni and this is in a size it says size small but I believe it was actually Italian sizing which I probably went with a 40 whatever was equivalent to a US 4 um, with things that I want to be a looser fit or just a normal fit I go for a US 4 if I want something to be more of a tight fit then I will go with a US 2 um, I typically like clothes to fit a little bit looser I don't usually gravitate towards skin tight clothes uh, however with dresses I do like skin tight so with dresses I'll get a 2 everything else a 4 um, so for sizing reference because um, I looked at the tag and it said size small but I know I definitely had ordered uh, Italian sizing with this so just for size reference I'm 5'7 I weigh like 115 pounds and um, I have a cup size of 34D um, so just for size reference so there's nothing really interesting about it it's uh, maybe like three quarter sleeve length for the sleeves 100% silk which is why I opted for this I loved the silk aspect I do like to pay attention to quality with clothing pieces which is something I didn't used to do several years ago I used to kind of have the thought process of clothes or to buy uh, trendy things that are less expensive and bags and shoes and jewelry are supposed to be better quality. I've now kind of transitioned to believing clothing also needs to be of quality so that's why I opted for this. It's kind of a lower boat neck and just plain white. So this is how I would wear the Missoni silk top. I have it paired with these denim from a brand I do not recall. I'll look at the tag and then I will put the brand on the screen. And these Hermes mules, which are not very comfortable. I don't know if they need to be broken in or what the deal is. Uh, so this would be for like a quick outing where I don't have to go too far because these are not so comfortable. Shoes. Um, and the jewelry is the same. I may switch the jewelry up if I were to actually wear this out. I'm just wearing it right now to try on for you guys to show how I'd style it. But the jewelry would be pretty close to the same. And of course, I would always pair a choker with it. Contrastly, this is obviously a more interesting piece from a Sony, very different from the last piece I shared. So this one, very colorful. We have this funky pattern going on, sequins, a lot going on with this top. So uh, and I do like to have that kind of diversity in my closet of some basic pieces, some that are a little bit more funky, I guess is what I would refer to this piece as. This is in an Italian 40 as well. I just loved how funky this was. I like how it's a little bit versatile in the sense of you can wear this by itself alone or you could wear this with a long sleeve underneath so I feel like this could be worn in the early fall to the winter months. So I really like this piece. It is thicker so it is definitely going to keep you warm. It's not too thick though to where you could definitely wear this kind of pre-fall time. It has this sequin collar. The entire sweater vest is kind of what I would refer to this piece as goes all the way around and it has this little black border along the sequins. I love the funky little coloring going on. I think if the color beneath all of the patterned color was, you know, red or something, I probably wouldn't have liked this piece, but I liked how it was black and then the patterns is really the only color since I don't typically like super colorful pieces. Uh, I say that and I've definitely purchased some, but most of it's kind of accessories. Um, so I really like this and I'm really excited to be wearing this. Next piece from a Sony is this long sleeve sweater. So I wouldn't say this is my favorite piece. It did look a lot more appealing on the model. However, I think it's something that can be spiced up. I don't dislike it because I just love everything with Sony. I have noticed that I've purchased accessories from them to bags, clothes, uh, not shoes though. I, I think they make shoes, but I don't own any shoes from Sony. And I've loved everything that I have purchased from that brand. It's all very high quality. I would say Missoni and Alaya are my favorite all around brands that you just know you can go and pick up anything from either one of those brands and it's going to have high quality. So I really like how it's high quality, of course. However, this is definitely something I would not want to wear on its own. There are certain pieces that can speak for themselves. They can stand on their own, like the sweater vest I just shared. This isn't one of them. This is something where I think chokers, earrings, the accessories are going to have to play this piece up, in my opinion. And again, this is in a size Italian 40, and it's just kind of a 
plain chevron green uh, boat neck sweater. And at the very end is a slightly high-low with the bottom of this sweater. So the back side obviously goes a little further down than the front. So here's how I would wear the Missoni sweater that I had mentioned needs to be spiced up. So I kind of went a little more overboard with the jewelry with these very statement studded Vince Camuto hoops, the same choker and bracelets and these Revolve Lovers and Friends denim shorts that I had worn in my Outfits of the Week vlog and with the Alaya sandals. So these Alaya sandals are obviously a statement piece. I feel like the sweater sort of needs statement pieces to spice it up a little bit. And then I just put my hair in a green, kind of matches this green hair clip and the purpose is for it to kind of look a little disheveled last minute just threw something on so that way it doesn't give it a like try hard look with the like more statement pieces so i also wanted the hoops to stand out a little bit more which meant having my hair up so this is how i would wear this next two pieces from a sony are pants that i'm absolutely obsessed with i have been waiting to film this haul so that i can take them to be tailored at alterations because i they're a little bit long on me so i do need to have them tailored I've been waiting to film this haul so that I can tailor them because I don't like to share with you guys pieces I've already worn. I do have one thing in this haul that I have already worn. I typically like to show it to you in that mint condition of when you first receive something it's brand new. I don't like to show you guys things after I've already used it, at least I try not to. So I have been waiting to film this so I can send these off to alterations and wear them. I'm very excited to wear. I have this pair and another pair and another color I'm going to be sharing after this pair. Uh, I'm going to be wearing these all fall and winter. They're so comfortable. Again, Missoni does it every time with the quality. So they have this little zipper, it's just like a typical pant. They do have the option to wear these with a belt. So I thought that the Hermes belt that I shared before would look really nice with these pants and the next pair that I'm going to be sharing after this pair. I think this is an Italian 40. Yes, this is an Italian 40 and they're referring to these as trousers. Um, so I really like these. I like the print on them. I know that they can look a little grandpa-ish perhaps uh, on camera and when they're being shown like this. Uh, but you'll see when I, I will insert try on clips of everything. Um, I'll style pieces how I did in my prior video. So you'll see that it doesn't have that look once you try it on. And I kind of like different pieces. This isn't something that you would see most women, especially my age, wearing out and about. So I do like that aspect and I also love how there are pockets. I cannot wear clothing pieces that don't have pockets uh, with pants anyways. Shorts, I, uh, I can do without pockets with shorts, but not with pants. I think it's almost part of the styling to be walking with your hands in your pockets. Uh, I'll insert a photo of what I'm referring to on here, either of myself or someone else doing what I'm referring to. I think it's almost part of the look to have at least one hand in your pocket. It kind of gives it a more effortless laid back look to the outfit. That's almost part of my styling with outfits is one hand goes in the pocket at all times. So. I do how, like how it has pockets, I also like how it has an extra um, fastening here for the pants. And then it has the uh, button as well, so it has three different fastenings and the option to wear a belt. And it's just this print all the way down. The bottom I believe is just a straight leg, and the back there's no pockets on the back. I don't personally, I wouldn't say I like or dislike if there's a pocket on the rear end of trousers, but I do like these, this specific pair without the pocket, so I actually like how there's no pockets on the back. For me, the primary concern with pockets is just these two front pockets, and they're quite um, a roomy size, these pockets as well. Here's this pair of Missoni pants, the belt is Hermes, top is Revolve, same bracelet stack, choker, uh, earrings, Roberto, something, and then the Alaya sandals. So this is how I would wear this. I probably would change the top to something else, but I already had it on from the other pair of Missoni pants, trying those on. So I would wear the top with it if I couldn't find anything else, but I probably would prefer to wear like a white top with this, or like a cream, probably a cream color. Last thing from Missoni are these pants, which I believe they are the same pants, if not just slightly different. Obviously it's a different color, but the pattern looks quite similar. The material feels quite similar. I would say these feel slightly softer than the prior pair. If I had to pick one, I probably like this pair slightly more just because I tend to gravitate toward 
darker colors uh, and it's the same ordeal you can wear a belt with it. it has the three different options of fastening the front pockets and no back pockets and i believe this is also in a size italian 40. yeah this is also in a size italian 40 uh, which again is equivalent to a us4 so uh, i really like the chevron sort of pattern on the pants uh, i don't really like the chevron look for the multi-colorful pieces uh, as a top or something if it doesn't have the like the sweater vest where it's sequined there's a black color going on as well I don't like it to just be all colorful unless it's an accessory like a headband or something so I like how these are just kind of a neutral uh, I would say this is like a dark brown with like a hint of red in it and the last pair you know you obviously saw the color of that one this one it may be a little difficult to pick up on camera it looks like it's picking it up on the viewfinder and these also have a straight leg it appears I would say the leg looks slightly wider on these pants though so here's these Missoni pants and this is kind of what I mean by the pocket is an accessory in itself I kind of use it to display whatever bracelets I'm wearing and it just creates more of an effortless vibe and then I paired it with these silver earrings from, I don't remember the brands, like Roberto something. Uh, this same choker, it's the same bracelet stack. And this Revolve belt, and I think this is from Revolve as well. So here's these Missoni pants, and I'm wearing the Alaya sandals. Okay, next thing are a pair of very heavy Fendi boots. I actually purchased these for my mom for her birthday. Uh, we wear the same size shoe, so we're going to share them. We share just about everything, um, but these were a little bit difficult, as we can see, to hide from her um, because when they were delivered, she obviously saw a very large package in order for these to fit, and I also wanted her to try them on just in case they weren't comfortable or something. So we have already opened these, and she tried them on. I tried them on. They're very cute um, boots. Let me unbox them So before I go on and on about them. So we had put everything back together so I could kind of truly unbox it with you guys. Uh, the dust bag came on top and I like how it has two separate dust bags. So uh, Hermes does that with their shoes. A lot of other brands don't where there's two separate dust bags. I actually prefer that with shoes. I just need a dust bag in general, but it's an extra bonus if there's a separate dust bag for each shoe, which just helps to keep these shoes in mint condition, especially if when you're traveling and something goes in your suitcase. So these are the boots. They have this little F here, uh, I believe. It's like their FF. They have a certain terminology for it that I'm obviously unfamiliar with uh, that they refer to this as, um, but it has that design here. And then it's just plain black. Uh, my mom is like myself, we don't really like uh, logos everywhere unless it's Chanel, something classic. So this just kind of a black on black where you don't really see it is uh, more to our liking. The only problem was when she tried them on and then I tried them on to see if we, I had the same problem as well is um, we have had this problem with those Givenchy boots that I shared I believe probably like 10 hauls ago, it was a while ago. If you're newly subscribed, you probably don't know what I'm referring to. If you've been subscribed for a while, you know the boots I'm referring to. It's those Givenchy boots, uh, they're just plain black ones that kind of go to here, and it's like a similar sort of like rubber boot sort of thing. This is not rubber, but uh, like plain, I guess, boot. And they felt very uncomfortable here. So with these ones, they didn't feel comfortable entirely, this whole section, it was just right here. Uh, when you go to walk. So when your foot kind of goes like that, it is a little bit uncomfortable right here. I noticed it on myself. My mom noticed it as well. So uh, I just plan to break them in for her and then we'll both just be able to wear them once they're broken in. Uh, I may need to break them in around the house or something first because I'm not one that likes to walk out and about experiencing discomfort, uh, which to me just kind of kills my whole vibe if I'm out trying to run errands or just, you know, enjoy my time with a friend or something that just kills the whole vibe. So I'll probably break these in in the house. Um, it's just a pair of plain black boots, nothing special, um, and they go to about the knee length. So I will have these linked in the description box as well as everything I've shared as long as I can find it and it's still in stock. So here is the FF logo, and then at the bottom of the shoes it also has that same logo on here. So something more discreet like this is what I typically prefer. Um, this is in a European size 39, and they are made in Italy as if not all or majority of Fendi's products are. So that's these. Next thing are these shoes from Alaya. I did already share these in, I think it was my outfits of the week vlog. So I have already worn these and you'll see in a minute exactly why I typically like to not wear things. I typically like to wait to wear things until I have hauled them 
because I've already worn these so you're not seeing them in mint condition. I wore them maybe a handful of times. So these are the sandals. Maybe the camera's not picking it up, but you can tell they've been a little bit worn since I have been wearing them. So these are the, they're actually pretty good on the back. For some reason, it's the front side that actually looks a little bit more worn. Um, so these are the sandals. I love the sides of them, which are just studded. Sorry, I keep looking at the viewfinder to make sure that they're in frame. So I love these studs on the side. It has these little mini studs here, and then these more circular ones. Uh, in between those. So I really like these studs, which is really what made me gravitate towards these sandals. And the front of the sandal is obviously kind of a Birkenstock inspired look. Uh, now I don't typically like Birkenstocks. I've never owned a pair of Birkenstocks. It's not something that I've ever been a fan of personally. Uh, I know Dior did collaborate with Birkenstock on a pair of, I think it might have been two or three pairs of shoes. One was like a mules, uh, another was a pair of sandals, and my mom actually wanted the pair of sandals, and then I like talked her out of it, but I don't, I'm just not really a fan of Birkenstocks, I'm not really sure why. Now, while this has a slight uh, resemblance of Birkenstocks, it's very much not a Birkenstock. Obviously, these are Alaya, and it really, for me, it was these studs on the side. If it didn't have those and this was plain black, uh, I may not like it as much, uh, but at, for me, it was just the studs that made me really ooh all over this piece. Uh, I also really like how it's black, silver, those are my favorite colors especially for fall and winter. So I actually really like these. Now they're very heavy so they're not very comfortable. I think I discussed that when I mentioned these in the Outfits of the Week vlog. Not so comfortable. Uh, go and watch that video if you want to see how they looked on my feet. I also really like how you can adjust these two straps so if your feet are bigger or smaller you can adjust the straps to fit the size of your foot. And this is the box that the sandals came in. Very nice quality box. I was very impressed with this. This is almost a piece I might have on display or something. I just love how it's this leather studded kind of look. I'm not sure if it's real leather. I'm assuming not. Uh, it may be actually. It kind of feels like it is. Uh, it also has this little belt strap that tied around to secure the box. So I really like the quality of this shoe box. It's definitely not your typical shoe box by any means. And uh, one thing I did not like was how it didn't come with a dust bag. I like dust bags for my shoes. Uh, however, I love the box. The box made up for the lack of a dust bag. Last pair of shoes are these Converse shoes. Now I wouldn't typically consider Converse to be something I would want to share in a luxury haul. I do like Converse shoes. I haven't purchased a pair in a long time, but I did go through this uh, several years of a phase of loving Converse. I've owned them in multiple different prints. I think I still own three to four pairs. I used to own like 10 to 15. That was all I wore for several years, uh, maybe like a decade ago, um, which I'm 25 now, maybe a little less than a decade ago. I think I was like 16 to 18. So these are the Converse sneakers. It is basically this fleece material, which I really liked. They also had a pair of high top ones that were, I believe in a cream color. I don't really like high tops. I like Golden Goose, they're high tops, those are comfortable, but I just have worn those so many times that I just wanted something different, you know, and also I don't, with high tops, you kind of have to, your outfit can't, they don't go with every outfit. Some outfits, high tops look a little silly in, so that's why I wanted a pair of low top sneakers. Obviously I own other low top sneakers, I just wanted something a little bit new. Um, and I also own a lot of white colored sneakers. For some reason, I don't own darker colored sneakers besides my Fendi ones that I believe I've shared. I think I've followed those before and probably a few others, but they're not very comfortable. So I wanted a pair that were more comfortable. I remembered Converse as being very comfortable. These might have even been men's. The sizing was oddly men's sizing, I believe, uh, which I ordered a men's 7, which is equivalent to a women's US 9. Um, so these are these, and they're not dirty, this is just the style, it's like a specked uh, design on the bottom of the shoe. I also like how it's slightly a platform, just like a mini platform. This is a green color, so I like that contrast of the blue-green. I haven't really seen anyone wearing th uh, this pair of Converse specifically, and this just feels extra comfortable because of that fleece material, and I do like the kind of different, unique look of this contrast of the colors and the material being more of a fleece material. So here's the sneaker up close. I really like these. I would even wear these with what I'm wearing right now, which is this top that has like a lace and it's kind of a navy blue color. I think that this top would actually look really good with these and just kind of some uh, like uh, basic colored pants. So that's kind of how I would style these, the choker, all of that. 
Um, I'm just obsessed with chokers at the moment and uh, I think that that kind of takes away from the casual look of these. If you add a choker, it kind of gives it more of an edgy look. So um, that's how I would style these. I also love the quality is really nice. Uh, I've always remembered Converse to be comfortable. I almost feel like this might be a, a higher quality than maybe their traditional Converse sneakers. I think this one is a little bit higher quality. So um, I definitely recommend purchasing these or uh, similar ones. I'll link whatever I can find if these are sold out down in the description box. Last thing I'm going to be sharing is a beauty product. So these are fragrances from Tory Burch. So these are their new fragrance collection, which invites us to visualize a brighter future and follow our dreams. And they're referring to this collection as Essence of Dreams. So it has five perfumes. I believe that, that they sent me all of them. Uh, if not, there may be other fragrance scents that are available. I believe that I have all of them though. So they came in this little box. I'm not sure if you can order all five of them in this box or not. If you're able to, I'll have it linked below. Otherwise, I'll just have each individual fragrance link. So when you open this, there's five different fragrances. I'd already shared this on my Instagram story. So if you saw that, then you've already seen these. I really like the packaging of this as well. So it's this little box, you open it, and then you this side, you pull this down, and then you can see all the names. Everything's on display. I would almost want to keep them in the box for display, um, but I'm probably going to give one to my friend, one to my mom. Um, my favorite scent out of all of them, was the Electric Sky, so I've already uh, tested out, I've sprayed all of these, I've smelled them prior to the video. So my favorite, number one, is Electric Sky, and second favorite is, uh, where is it, Sublime Rose. All very good. I just, everyone has their preference, though, on what scents they like, and for me it was the Electric Sky and Sublime Rose that really stood out to me. The other three are great as well, they were just a little bit more subtle. Uh, I don't like too strong, and I don't like too subtle, I like kind of in the middle. And I would say Electric Sky was a little bit on the stronger side, but it was a very nice uh, smell. So uh, those are my two favorites, and I believe the price range for these is around $90. Um, and these are new again, so I'll have these linked in the description box below. So that's it for this luxury haul. Again, make sure that you check out Zuby's Halo Hairdryer. I'll have that linked in the description box below, as well as all of the other products and pieces I have mentioned in this video. And I will see you guys in my next luxury haul. Bye, guys.